Everybody welcome. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, additions to the agenda tonight, uh, we have two additions. Uh, one uh, will be on our guest, the addition of Seveds is here to talk to us, Kristen. Uh, we'll put that on under guests if everybody's okay with that. Um, we'll do this all at once. Uh, POW MIA display, um, Mary Lynn is here to talk about as well. We can put that under guests as well. And we are removing the VernonVermont.org discussion because Martin uh, wanted to hold back because he doesn't have all the answers that he was looking to give us this evening. So, so moved. Second. Moved and seconded to add Seveds, uh, Maryland, and remove the website. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Uh, I have no remarks tonight, so we're going to go right into guests. Seveds. We'll start with you. Come on up. You can bring up the chair. Yeah, you can totally bring up the chair. Yeah, you can bring up the We won't kick you out. Good. No, no. Great. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm Kristen Mihalik. I am the Cooperative Internship Coordinator at the BDCC. Tonight, we're here just to give you a few updates on some of our programs um, and initiatives as well. Um, since the last time that we saw you in February, um, I have placed, we have placed over 10 interns in summer internships. So that brings our total to 78 interns placed since 2014 in Wyndham County businesses. Um, so if you know of a business or a currently enrolled college student or recent graduate, graduate within the last 18 months, have them reach out to me and we can set them up with a paid internship here in Wyndham County. So lots happening um, throughout the region with the internship program. We are also continuing our high school career awareness program, Fast Tracks to Success, that we had shared last time. Over 180 um, sophomores and juniors throughout Wyndham County participated in that last year, and we're continuing to do that again uh, this year, where we're going into the classroom, doing in-classroom time with sophomores and juniors, educating them on the career opportunities available here in Wyndham County and how do they achieve those career goals and, and get to those opportunities. Um, so we'll be doing that again. Um, Southern Vermont Young Professionals, we're doing events um, monthly throughout the region as well. So I'm going to pass it to RT Jen, who would like to yeah. go. You should do okay. you that program. Okay. Hi, good evening. How are you doing? Um, RT Brown, uh, I wear two hats at the BDCC. Uh, the first one is the Wyndham County Economic Development Program's Project Manager. Most folks are well aware of that program here. Um, uh, we are going into um, the, what I call the, no, the second to last year of, of the distributions uh, from Entergy. So it will get one more distribution um, in 2018. Um, uh, as you know, that there's a revolving loan program, and, and that's that's moving along. Um, the intent there is that that will stay and be active in, in perpetuity. Um, we are in the middle of the grant cycle, so we've received some uh, projects that are going to be reviewed for this year, and then there'll be uh, a final RFP issued next year. Last year and this year, the focus of the, the RFP was on workforce development. Um, we hear hear that as feedback consistently when we talk to our area employers that they um, really need help um, trying to figure out how to retain and educate uh, a good workforce here, here in the region. Um, 
The second hat I wear at the BDCC is, is activities related to entrepreneurship. So we've um, started a, everything's under the brand of this Instigate, and it's really to help um, create a culture of innovation, um, and that includes events, workshops um, uh, in the region to help folks take their idea uh, from point A to point B. Um, so uh, the tagline that I've been using is Instigate. It gives ideas a place to go. Um, we do a monthly digital marketing workshop uh, meeting. Um, we're starting to put together a, a digital marketing boot camp that we can actually take on the road to different municipalities. So um, if, if that is of interest to, to you folks here, let, let us know. We're gonna, the first one's going to be in, in the Valley, in the Wilmington-Dover area, but we're hoping that you know, and it's a real hands-on uh, program. So, what's it, the focus of that? Uh, d digital marketing in general. So, for, for municipalities or for businesses? For businesses, for 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 businesses, but a municipality could certainly attend. Sure. Um, but what I mean by take it on the road, the the one that we have now is is here. In, it's it's in Brattleboro, so it's close to here. Um, but we want to be able to take it out to other areas in the region so that the area businesses um, can, can enjoy that workshop and participate and learn about different ways to, to market their business. Um, I'll, I'll, one more comment. Um, we are introducing to the region a new, it's called a micro entrepreneur assistance program and it's for it's, it's a lending, a re-lending program so we've received some funds from the USDA to, to re-lend um, to businesses that aren't able to get traditional financing just because they're maybe too young. They don't have, they don't have the, the history uh, for a traditional lender to, to feel secure with lending to them. So we've received those funds and we're getting our ducks in a row and uh, uh, just starting to talk about that. So we'll be announcing that shortly. And along with that is a grant that really is meant to provide those businesses that are interested in that program with the right tools and resources so that they understand how to keep an eye on finances um, so that they can then, uh, you know, in a year, well, probably two years, realistically, go to a traditional lender um, and, and receive traditional financing for, for any of the needs that they might have. Um, so that's about it from my perspective. Happy to answer any questions. Do you have any? Great, I'm gonna deliver um, some bullet points and quickly and then the little moment for any other questions too. But I will say I was at a version of the digital workshop that was being delivered to um, more local officials and some town organizations and it, it adapted really well. It was something that translated into sort of how can this downtown organization use Facebook or you know online marketing tools, free tools especially, yeah. um, to do promotion. So I'm Jen Stromston and I work on great grants and I work on project development and sort of special projects um, at BDCC. And so I'm speaking about the SEDS, um, although it, that's not a piece, so I sort of helped write that grant for the federal funding to do the regional economic plan, which we lovingly call the SEDS. We're stuck with that acronym, we didn't make it up, <laughs> but it's Comprehensive Economic Development Strategies. Um, and so that's your regional strategic plan, that is the Wyndham Region um, Strategic Economic Plan. So the, the update, um, the funding was just approved, the update is coming, it'll be a full Southern Vermont Regional Plan. Um, originally, the SEDS um, was, is, was the Wyndham, Wyndham Region, it was uh, sort of by special dispensation to do such a small area. <coughs> Traditionally, the federal government will not let, let you do something with such a small population and land area. Um, so the update is going to be starting in the next few months um, in collaboration um, with some with the partners over in Bennington County and some really experienced sort of leaders over there who have been through many pieces of the things that led up to this, this planning process. Um, so uh, in the last process, doing the SEDS, there were about 55 meetings. Um, so it's pretty thorough. I went around the region, and that's going to, there's, we're not going to compromise on that. We're going to sort of double down on that. And so um, one, one really big message is that we want to see, we want communities engaging in this. Um, and that's both at sort of a you know, select board level, but also individuals. Um, one thing that we, a big part of the SEDS process is data, is we kind of do a, we do a whole fresh round of, research and analysis on sort of regional conditions. Um, so one of the things that we've been 
doing as we prep to come to select board meetings is doing some town level economic data. I mean, there are always limitations and constraints given the delay on those data sets. Um, and that is, that's something that we, we didn't bring to you to, well, we, we have that with us. No, we didn't bring that to you tonight because Vernon's obviously in a special situation with some ongoing very major transitions. Um, so we are paying a lot of attention to that. Um, we are paying attention to this, the job changes and the wage, wage changes coming around the, the VY closure. Um, and this, we're watching how it's impacting the region and we're really highlighting that and doing some analysis on that to make sure it's well understood um, by legislators and, and by the community. Um, so that is, that's something we're pretty focused on. And as you know, the current SEDS is, um, which is our federally approved economic plan, is the only, it incorporated the learnings, the findings from the BY study, the BY impact study, um, so it's, you know, that Martin obviously was involved in. Um, and it's still the only SEDS in the nation that we know of that talks about and comes up with strategies and addresses, really to names, the possibility of a nuclear power plant closing. Um, so it's still a pretty cutting edge thing. And in this next round, it's going to be really important to obviously be looking at the current conditions and you know what's working, what's not working, and where the data tells us that we are in developing sort of a new round of strategies you know, based on the current conditions. Because when that was first obviously looked at, no one knew it was going to be a fact. It was just looked at in sort of an abstract theoretical way. So, so again, most important message around that is just making sure that um, we help you engage and uh, you know around the SEDS process on the individual and sort of a you know group level as a town. So thank you and questions. Do you mind if I jump in? Oh, yeah, please. yeah. So I really think that um, Jen did a great job of describing the SEDS and the real call to action is that we want towns at the table. We want municipalities, town leaders, businesses to be involved in these meetings, these events, these conversations, because you are the ones who helped develop. Um, the previous, our current SEDS, and has led to programs like the internship program, the Southern Vermont Young Professionals. You know, our current SEDS are the ones who developed all of these programs that you're hearing about today. So, you know, what are the next round of programs that are going to be developed are going to come from the SEDS? <coughs> so your input is really important. So that's kind of our call to action. So we'll be doing that again. So any questions that we can answer? Yeah, I just had one uh, question regarding the study that you mentioned. That, that study was done prior to Vermont Yankees announcing closure. Yes. There yes. was another study done after mm -hmm. the closure by some group from the University of Massachusetts. Yeah, I the think. Donahue Institute. So and so how did anyone take the time to compare those to see what the differences were? Uh, I know that when this University of Massachusetts study was released, <clears throat> there, it seemed like it engendered some surprise on the part of some of our regional planners. Um, that it was so such an impactful event, mm -hmm. whereas um, I think for some of us we were expecting yeah. it to be quite an impact. Yes. Event. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how did your study or have you compared the two? Um, we have compared the two. It's funny. I can't actually. Th I, I can't think of any discrepancies that I recall around that. I mean, one of the key differences was the VY impact study was really looking at how Wyndham County would feel it, and what the UMD, the Mass, the U University of Massachusetts Donahue Institute, the UMDI study, um, it took a step back to look at the whole job <coughs> shed. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was part of why, then you could sort of really talk about like, what's the total economic impact? So the numbers started to get really big. And so the, so, and it and also they did a full on in-plan study, which is to say, what are the indirect? So there's 600 people employed there, but how many more jobs does it create when those people spend so and live? So your study didn't cover those the secondary UMDI impacts? covered that, it just sort of, it, it, it the numbers grew a bit because in-plan kind of fact, you know, factors yeah. in. And that wasn't our study. That was a study that was commissioned oh, yeah. by all, ever, yeah. I mean, the, the FERCOG, the Franklin County, Massachusetts sure. folk paid for, but it was yeah. commissioned by the three counties. I was surprised basically. that regional planners would express surprise mm -hmm. at yes. the yeah. impact of a closure of something like this engine down there. Yes. That, that was my <laughs> yes. I, I just, I thought, and I'm not a planner, I'm, I'm a chemist, um, well, by training. And so, um, but now I'm a select board member. And uh, so um, the two are very compatible. But I'll answer, I'll answer <laughs> different, well, numbers, data, and, you know, empirical. <laughs> um, so one of, the, one of the things we've looked at a, a, a bunch is we've taken recently that, that for instance, the uh, assumptions in that, that UMass study about what would happen to the 
GDP, GDP. like the regional it's only gross just, regional project. We're yeah. only seeing that in the past year. We're only have data like no, from course, 2016. Yeah. You no, know, but, but it really looks like what it projected. So that yeah. is to say we've sort of seen um, what is a large and shocking, if you didn't believe that it was, you know, going to be that big, oh, drop yeah. well, in I the regional it. GDP, yeah. right? <laughs> so, um, so would be happy to share, you know, so we didn't want to bring a lot of gloom and doom data on that, about things you already know, you just, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, you. But we have been looking at um, the, the large drop in the utility sector, it turns out, in the yeah. past year, and so, yeah, yeah it's, it, it really bears out what the studies told us. Well, thank you. Yes, yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. That's all I had. Anybody else have questions for the guests? Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All of our contact information is on this sheet. So, again, I'll do another little plug for the internship program. If you know of anyone looking for an internship or know a business. Steve? <laughs> <laughs> Any age. You gotta be no. enrolled in college. No. Just, a, just a warning no. this is truly the hot seat. Truly. Because this is exhausting. Are you sure? I'll have to remember that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Lynn, come talk to us about the POW MIA display, please. There's some stuff. There's some stuff. So every year in September, um, there's POW MIA recognition. And this year, the 15th has been designated as that official date. Um, so for several years, um, I have been putting in display, remembrance display, up in the foyer. Um, and we've been putting it up there, usually lasting the whole, the whole week. Um, you used to do it just for like the day before and that day, and then a couple of years ago people said, well, leave it up. So we've been doing it for the whole, the whole week. So, um. I did remind Tim this morning that it was coming up, and he said, oh, good, when you bring stuff in, I'll help you set it up. So. Okay. So you just need a motion from the board to allow her to do such. So moved. Second. Moved and second in to allow the POWMIA display to go up. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? All set. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for you. doing that. Good luck with that. Appreciate it. Open public comments, non-agenda items, please. Come on up, Munson. As you may remember, I uh, requested that uh, an agenda item be added. It wasn't. <clears throat> About 100 feet from where you are sitting, there's a granite monument with the names of 69 men from Vernon who fought in World War II. They're familiar names to those who have lived in this town for a long time. Arsenal, Patinsky, Corliss, Capon, Crossman, Edson, Harris, Johnson, Morse, Skib, Sherlin, Shippy, Streeter, Tyler, Zaluzny, and the name of three men who did not come back. Marvin Johnson, Ernest Murray, Michael Batinsky. These men gave their lives to end Nazism and fascism. There are also the names of 77 men who fought in the Civil War, including 16 who died, who went to war to end slavery and white supremacy. As we know from Charlottesville, these evils are on the rise again, but this time in our own country. By remaining silent, you do not honor their sacrifice. But rather, by not speaking up, you give comfort and license to those who oppose their ideals. This is not a matter of right versus left, but rather right versus wrong. Once again, I ask you, as a town, as the members of the select board, to take it upon yourselves to make a statement as a group that says that Charlottesville and, and white supremacy is unacceptable to our town, to our state, and our country. Thank you. Thank you. No department committee reports. Approval of meeting minutes from August 22nd.
Swan, what'd you find, Sandy? <laughs> I'm being nice today. <laughs> we found a few typos. Okay. Just some typos. I make a motion that we accept the minutes with the typos corrected. Second. So, uh, motion to approve as corrected and second. And all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Mr. Clerk. Yes, um, <clears throat> Mr. Chair and members of the select board, um, I move the, uh, that we approve the following warrants uh, and uh, authorize payment. Um, <clears throat> the first being accounts payable 5-T in the amount of $47,203.83 and two payroll uh, warrants 34S in the amount of $10,684.09 and 35S in the amount of $9,748.34. Second. All those in favor of passing warrants as read, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. New business, municipal resolution for municipal planning grant. Because it's that time of year again, and part of the process of applying for the municipal planning grant, which we did get last year, is to have a resolution approved by the select board. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the municipal resolution for municipal planning grant as presented. Seconded. Okay. Moved and seconded to accept the municipal resolution for the municipal planning grant as Presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. We took the website off. Uh, Barrels and Fisher contract for heating oil. Um, that was already approved at the last meeting. There were several meetings ago. I can't remember at this point. But we just need to sign it. I'm the only one who designed this one? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Did you sign it in both places? Oh, is there two? <laughs> the stickies are not working, are they? <laughs> 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 Neon ones. Flash it. Oh, no, it says no, sign here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Perfect. We didn't need to double do this one, did we? Okay, good. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, yeah, the coffee stained um, arrows. Are, they're not coffee stained, they're like leaves or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll work on brighter colors. <laughs> Public participation agenda items. Seeing none. Um, correspondence. Um, the only additional correspondence we've gotten besides what's in your packets is um, that we need to do some edits on our Wikipedia page. Like that. <laughs> I will figure out how to do that. And we do have a request from a Kathleen Haley? I can't really. Halvey. Halvey, thank you. To borrow some tables for the town light tax sale. Is that something that we do? We used to. I don't know. And uh, we stopped. Yeah, we used to because we had someone here that could help load and unload and that kind of thing. Um, I think when we stopped doing it, the fire department picked up the slack. Yeah. It's been some time since we've approved yeah. that because yeah. it hasn't been during my tenure here. No. no. 
No, we, we use them for town functions outside of this building, and that's it. Well, the other thing I would be worried about is, if, heaven forbid, if someone set their baby on the thing and it collapsed, mm. what sort of liability do we have? Mm. You, know, do, you know what I'm saying? I, I think that should be examined before we lend stuff out for use around the town. Mm. They're not the nicest tables in the world, either. Well, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I mean, no, they're pretty beat. Either. Most the plastic ones are great, but we only have a handful of them. It's the big old wooden mm -hmm. ones that are half broken right. that are the ones that we have the most of. Um, what's everybody think? Uh, I would Let's just a, do a consensus. And I'd be you know, opposed to doing that until uh, until and if we get uh, the, the issues with insurance and also uh, well, they need to be inspected periodically. Yeah. I guess I agree with Steve, uh, particularly since it's been some time yep. since <coughs> they've been lent out. Okay. I just um, contact the fire department. Okay. Yeah, I would say fire department too. Okay. So direct them to the fire department if they have some tables that they would like to uh, utilize, which kind of just thinking mm -hmm. in my head the liability issue still sits there because the fire department's ours. Yeah. Well, it, it is. So. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, it probably it's does. Easy. I don't know how yeah, that works, uh, but I just know that if there's a problem, yeah, it comes back to us all careful. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know what, what the condition some of these are, but they're, they're at your some are pretty bad. We don't want to find out. You know, Sign a hundred or Yeah. Um, I don't know. My personal feeling on it on it is. No, across the board. Um, that's my vote. Then not directing them to get anything from the town, whether it be from the fire department or from us. But that's that's my own personal feeling. Because, like I said, ultimately it comes back to us. But if we have an issue. But if everybody's happy with telling them to go to the fire department, then that's what we will do. Well, as, as you said, it, it does amount to a liability one way or the other for yeah. the town. I just, I don't know what condition the fire departments are in. I mean, I just think that was the option that was there before. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really no different than when the tables are used here and the public comes in. Yeah. And at the fire department. No, but so they are he no here, difference. and so we're providing them, and, and we have some control over them. Right. And you take them out of service or whatever if they are flimsy, but... Once they get out, if something breaks on them and we don't know about it, and they fail, and somebody gets injured, I, I don't, I see a clear pathway there. Yeah. It would be something I'd want to check with my agent. On, you know. Yeah, because the person's homeowners would be taking care of that, taking care of things occurring at their home. Yeah, you would think. With borrowed tables from the town? I don't know. M maybe, I don't it's know. true. I, I would uh, not risk it, but you can rent tables uptown very reasonably at Rentals Plus or whatever. I took tables from my church to do my tax and, there, and there's the other thing. You can do a donation to the church and, and do that. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's confessing now. They will know. So what, did we come up with a consensus on this? I'm not sure that I have a really clear... Uh, I think we have a consensus of no across the board because there's three of us that say no across the board and two that say go to the fire department. So, as a majority. Sorry. Okay. okay. Um, and I just handed out the sheriff's log yes. for the month. Also, we received um, the decision on from the PUC about the amendment that Entergy requested to reduce their security fence line um, from 10.5 acres to 1.3. So it's just going around the IFC. Is I don't even know how to pronounce that. Is Is Yeah. Um, and that has been granted. So they're assuming that's, that's going to save about $1.2 million a month wow. from that's withdrawing from the decommissioning fund. Yes. Wow. That's excellent. That went quickly. Great. And I have those decisions. I have a few copies if anybody wants. Okay. 
to read them. That's all the correspondence. Okay. Town admin report. And for the admin report, we have sent out the village center designation application to the state of Vermont. So that was completed and done this past week. And we also received the radiation protection grant from the state for $15,000 for 2017-18. So that is going a lot easier this year. That's for the emergency year. management center? Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty much our report. Is that $15,000 a year or $15,000 each year? For this year, this year. and this, this is probably the last year, year that they'll offer it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, upcoming meetings I'm not going to read all these because there's a bunch of them you can read them uh, next regular select board meeting is the only one that I'll pay any attention to Tuesday September or excuse me Tuesday September 19th 630 same bad time same bad channel uh, I don't I rather like Tuesdays you don't care for Tuesday I love Tuesday oh just don't love it here, right? <laughs> I love it every Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion to adjourn someone. So moved. Second. Oh All those in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Aye.